Hello and welcome to today's tidings. I'm your host, Joyce Tumia. Today's topic is on science and religion, and here to share his perspective on that is Dr. Murray Peshkin. And Dr. Peshkin is a scientist at Argonne Laboratory, but you can expand you can expand on that, expand or expound on that, and share whatever other background information you'd like before we really get into the science and religion discussion. What else would you like to share about yourself? Well, <clears throat> I am a physicist at Argonne National Laboratory. Mm -hmm. uh, I work in theoretical physics mostly on fundamental issues about what we know about nature. But uh, that's not today's subject. Uh, today's subject is science and religion, which has nothing to do with my work at Argonne. It's my private hobby. Okay, and so you're actually here not as an Argonne scientist, but as an American scientist. Yes, as a s scientist who as a citizen is concerned about what's happening to the country. Okay, and I understand that you have given quite a few talks on this topic, like to the Rotary and at libraries and high schools, because this is something you feel is very important. That, that, that's exactly right, and that in fact is is part of why I'm here, not all of, but okay. part of why I am here, because uh, <clears throat> I do speak to groups like that that you mentioned, and I've also spoken to national audiences and to some university colloquia, mm -hmm. but the most valuable people to talk with, not talk to, are actually those small groups, and I hope that uh, people who see this show uh, will approach me if they're interested. Okay, and we will put your contact information in the credits and possibly throughout the show. You know, um, before we totally get into the topic, I think a mm -hmm. little more background information would be interesting. Like the fact that you have been at Argonne for, was it 50 years? Yes, Because actually. I think that adds some credibility to anything you say connected to science, whether it has to do with Argonne itself or not. Well, it's fair, it's fair enough. Uh, <laughs> the appropriate disclaimer goes something like this. Uh, I can legitimately <clears throat> I can legitimately use my connection with Argonne as a kind of credibility witness, if mm -hmm. you like, but the laboratory neither uh, the laboratory doesn't particularly endorse what I say. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not interested. This is mm -hmm. on my own time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether they agree with me or not, but they should. Okay, they should. Well, that's it's good to have these definite opinions. But the fact that you've been a scientist, wherever it is, actually sure. is really the point, that you've been a scientist for that long. And of course, you've also been, um, you've been around for a while, so you yep. also have wisdom, I would like to think. And I've, and I've been at many other institutions okay. in several countries. So. Okay. So what originally sparked your interest in this? Is this something that is just automatically of interest to scientists because the debate is out there and it's kind of a political situation or discussion? Well, I think what, what really got me to do something about it is my growing awareness that there is a conflict, there's an escalating conflict be between some parts of the religious community and science as a subject, hmm. actually. And it's, the flashpoint has to do with the teaching of Darwinian evolution in public schools. Okay. That's not all of it, but that's, that's the, the main issue. Mm -hmm. Historically, the conflict goes back before Darwin, actually. Okay, and is there a point in history that you can point to as the... Oh, I would say the early 1800s, okay. when the geologists began to discover that the world is at least a million years old. Mm -hmm. And you can see where then, where the conflict comes in. Okay, okay. And this conflict, this apparent conflict, is very threatening to, sci to American science because if we don't teach the right science in our public schools, mm -hmm. we are no longer going to be a leading scientific country. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing that, that has really gotten me out. That and the fact that the conflict is spurious. In truth, uh, science conflicts hard, hard, does not conflict significantly with most people's religions. Okay. And that is a point which I think most people don't understand. Mm -hmm. And 
their failing to understand it is something for which I blame the scientific community. All right, and how is that? Well, when you were in school, mm -hmm. I'm sure we taught you about pulleys and levers mm -hmm. and DNA and all kinds of good stuff like that. Right. But we never really told you, unless you had an exceptional teacher, what science is really all about. Okay. Uh, well, we never really told you what science does and how it does it. We never really told you what a theory is and how we know when it's right. Hmm. And we never really told you uh, how science relates to other ways of knowing things. Okay, and you're going to explain some of this. I'm, that would be helpful since apparently a lot of us missed that. To do that in half an hour is, of course, impossible, but I give you well, a at hint. Least introduce it. And, this, and then we can think of this as an, mm -hmm. as an advertisement to people who want to hear more from me. Okay, sure, wonderful. Let me start by saying that science and religion are two of the cornerstones of Western society. Okay. Uh, they are the things. They are not the only ones, but they are two of the main things which, which enabled the development of Western society as it exists today. All right. And you know, which is very different from life in the, in the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the two should be, and the two, well, excuse me, and the two continue to play major roles in everybody's life, even if they participate in neither because of the forces that they generate around us. All right. Now, the fact that the two seem to be in conflict in this way, or seem to be heading for a showdown, is really a national tragedy. And I'm just trying to do my part in heading that off. And the crux of this disparity? The crux of it is this. Science and religion have different goals and are different in other ways too. Let me start mm -hmm. with the goals. Okay. Religion addresses and questions that are of crucial importance to many people, the existential questions. Why am I here? What's expected of me? Mm -hmm. Expected of me by whom? Mm -hmm. What happens to me after I die? Is there any continuity? Uh, these are questions which really concerns people and about which mm -hmm. science is absolutely silent. Hmm. Religion also uh, deals with values, with mm -hmm. ethical issues. Okay. Uh, science is completely free of values. I don't mean that scientists are free of values, oh, but science itself okay. is, is it? free of values. It does not speak to these things, and it cannot. I'm glad you brought up that point, because that's a very important qualification. Sure. So. What is the difference in, in how they approach the thing? Well, they are two, they are two entirely different logical discussions. Mm -hmm. They are different because they start from different, defini different assumptions and even different definitions of truth. Uh, science is based entirely upon what we can observe by experiments and other observations. Right. It recognizes no other definition of truth. The very definitions in science go back to experiments, as a matter of fact. Now, religion involves revealed knowledge. And yet, not all knowledge, because religion allows for miracles, which is accepting the fact that some things can't be explained. Yes, that's exactly right. right. Whereas science takes the view that we may not know how to explain it mm -hmm. yet. But that but there has to be the, an explanation. But, but yet is the key word. Okay. Now, the two are not really able to conflict because they don't speak the same language. Hmm. And let me, give you, uh, let me give you an example to show you what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. in, in the beginning of the 19th century, when this conflict between geological knowledge and and revealed knowledge okay. began to become stark. Mm -hmm. There was in England a great deal of 
intellectual ferment about this, particularly amongst the community of theologians. All right. How could the world both be a million years old mm -hmm. and maybe 6,000 years old? Mm -hmm. And in 1857, that was two years before, before the theory of evolution, All right. a man named Goss, G-O-S-S-E, proposed a very simple remedy. He said, God created the universe in exactly the way the Bible says, right. and he made it look older. Ah, Deception. Very clever. Neither <laughs> side saluted Trickery, it. magic, I don't know. Hmm. Well, you know, God could do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could put the fossils in Africa, if you believe. That God if, can do anything? Okay. Sure. Okay. Now, when you look at that from a scientific point of view, you get a complete blank. Science, we, I mean, we, we are speaking of it like it's an interesting possibility, but we both know that we think it's kind of silly. Science has no way to refute that. Hmm. Science, in fact, doesn't know what the words mean mm -hmm. because science only knows meaning in terms of things that we can observe or can deduce logically from what we have from what we have observed. Mm -hmm. And this has been, this is a, a point of view mm -hmm. that is designed so that you can't observe it. He made it look that way. And any place you look, you will find it that way. Okay, but scientists might say that about God, but they wouldn't say that about some other unexplained phenomena like, um, a particular statue somewhere or rock formation or carvings in rocks or you exactly. know uh, stones left from possible exactly. Vikings way before we know th you know that Ex anyone else was here exactly right that sometimes turn out to be hoaxes and who knows if they really are or not but the scientists would always well, take the view been, that if it was done by man that it should at some point be able to be proven that it was done by man as yeah. a hoax Yes, when I say observable, I really mean observable in principle. We may okay. not yet have the ability, All but right. we can see that in principle, this is something that can be tested. Okay. Then we know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. The result is that we're talking about two utterly different definitions of truth. Mm -hmm. so, uh, there are scientists who think that scientific logic can disprove religion. That's nonsense because you can only disprove religion in terms of the logic of religion. And the mm -hmm. logic is just different. The okay. definitions are different. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, may I say. Now see, I personally am not as concerned about what religion or religions say as I am about spirituality, which I think transcends religion. Yes. But that's okay. For your purposes, I understand yeah. what you're talking about with religion. A particular set of beliefs or dogma about you know who was born when and did what and where and mm -hmm. why and all of that. Okay. Yes. Where spirituality yeah. to me See, is yeah. more. It doesn't matter if this group believes in so and so yeah. as having been whatever, as long as there's a bottom line. Of the Dalai will to walk. You cannot think of a more okay. spiritual person than, than, than the Dalai Lama who doesn't mm -hmm. believe in God. Hmm. But or Einstein, same mm -hmm. same statement. Okay. Uh, however, the real point here is that science doesn't involve spirituality. It's only right. scientists. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So, what I wanted to say was, what I wanted to speak of is what science really does, what it is. Uh, of course, we do experiments. We collect lots and lots of facts. Mm -hmm. The body of knowledge that we call science is not a list of is not a list of the of the results of every experiment that we have ever done. The body of knowledge consists of what we call a theory. Now right. you know a theory can mean a lot of things mm -hmm. as used by everybody, including me, I'm afraid. It can mean a silly hunch, it can mm -hmm. mean anything. But what I'm speaking of here as a theory is, is an established fundamental theory in which we have total confidence. All right. And the body of knowledge consists, of the body of science, of knowledge in science, consists of what's in those theories. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Let me give you an example because uh, it illustrates both the limitations and the strength of theories. I give you an example from physics for starters because I'm a physicist okay. and I know mm -hmm. it well. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a theory that we call Newtonian mechanics or classical okay. mechanics. It was invented by Isaac Newton 300 years ago. We still use it today. Uh, it, uh, Isaac Newton invented it to explain the motions of the planets so that he could mm -hmm. calculate the motions of the planets and it worked. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that in this article that you wrote. Yes, mm -hmm. right. And now, of course, it's been expanded, but the basic assumptions and the basic structure of the theory mm -hmm. are unchanged, so that that theory not only explains the motions of the planets, it explains the motions of baseballs and of jet, chain, of, of jet planes mm -hmm. and of water waves and a tsunami and of grains of sand and uh, of the internal workings of the jet engine and all of those things. One okay. theory, based on very few assumptions, mm -hmm. gets all those things right. So we say the theory is right. Th all that right. isn't just chance. Okay, which to me seems like it wouldn't be theory anymore. But theory always sounds like it's still well, an we, idea. As a matter of fact, that's, to a it's interesting that you word. say that. Uh, some scientists have stopped using the word theory and say model. Okay, model or a formula or whatever, right? Right. Right. Okay, but I and understand what you mean by theory. Now, you mean as accepted. The important thing about it is that that theory, I say that that theory is right. Well, I'll mm -hmm. come to its limitations. But when I say it's right, what I mean is this. I know that it's right and you don't know that it's right. I know the theory and you don't, but you know it's right. And or planes wouldn't stay in the air. Yeah, exactly. If somebody designs a plane that is based on not believing that theory, I'm not going to fly in it, uh -huh. and neither are you. No, I'm not, <laughs> if I knew that that was the right. case, right. So, therefore, science claims that our, our knowledge is in a certain way absolute, and it really is in that sense. Okay. Now, however, when that theory, <laughs> that theory has been applied successfully on all these levels that I mentioned, mm -hmm. When it was applied at the beginning of the 20th century, or the late 19th century, to the motion of atoms, it failed completely. It was just totally wrong. So we have a new theory. It has mm -hmm. a name, quantum mechanics. It doesn't matter. Okay. I mention it because that's quantum what I do. Quantum mechanics still sounds yeah. impressive. <laughs> right. Now, so Actually, however, quantum mechanics is built on the old mechanics. It's mm -hmm. very, it has a very different starting point, but it okay. relies on many of the things in the old mechanics. But more importantly than that, when you apply it to baseballs and rockets mm -hmm. and tsunamis and all those things, it gives exactly the same answer as the old mechanics. Okay. Why? So it's only... Well, you know it must, because if it didn't agree with everything that we know, we wouldn't mm -hmm. be using that theory. All right. So what does that tell you about the old theory? Is it wrong? No, it's right. Under However, it has, it, it has a limited domain. But not under. It has a limited domain of validity where okay. it has been verified by the experiments. Okay. And so I say, well, not only is it right, but will forever be right, because those experiments will not go away mm -hmm. in that domain of validity. Mm -hmm. So that's why scientists then confuse the public by saying two things that are really not contradictory, mm -hmm. but which sound contradictory. One, we know that our theories are right, and two, we're ready to change them any time mm. we discover something new. Both mm -hmm. are true. That alters it slightly. You know, go ahead and explain before we go farther the example about the planets, because I think mm -hmm. that is very interesting, sure. how that theory is applied to the planets well, and altered. Yeah, it's very interesting, all right. Newton uh, figured out a law that tells you how an object moves under certain, certain forces, mm -hmm. and he discovered a force law. We call it gravity. Gravity. So uh, that's the force by which the sun attracts mm -hmm. the planets, in which everybody attracts everybody, everything, everything attracts everything else. Okay. And uh, he calculated the motion of the planets, mm -hmm. and, he, and he got ellipses based on the sun, and it agreed with the astronomical observations, and everybody was happy. Mm -hmm. 
more accurate observations over the next century disclosed that it wasn't exactly right. Mm -hmm. And that was not because the theory was wrong, it was because it had been applied approximately. Yeah. He only considered the force between the sun and the planet. Mm -hmm. When he considered, when you put in the forces between the planets themselves, then it agrees with the experiments. Mm -hmm. And that is the way, exactly the way science progresses. I think that is so fascinating, Glenn. So that's what science is really about. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, uh, I said that we can believe a theory if it agrees with all these things, mm -hmm. but it's nice if the theory actually predicts things that we didn't put into it mm -hmm. and gets them right, or didn't know we put into it. Okay. And this, in fact, happened with exactly this example. It turned out, oh, I don't know, 18... 50 maybe, mm -hmm. uh, that the motion of the planet Uranus, which was then the last, the outermost known planet, mm -hmm. wasn't exactly as calculated. All right. And a man named Adams pointed out that if you postulated the existence of another planet of a certain mass in a certain place, it would account for that because it would attract Uranus, right? Fascinating. So the astronomers looked and they discovered mm -hmm. Neptune. And they were able to discover it because technology had improved? Yeah. Or oh, so no, it's not, okay. well, actually not. Okay, it the was technology a, was there, but they had Galileo had, no had noticed it, but he didn't know it was a planet. Oh, okay. <laughs> and okay. that was, what, 200 years earlier? Before. <laughs> yeah. All right. At any rate, predictions are sort of at the heart of what we love about a theory. Mm -hmm. And when, when we have a theory mm -hmm. which does all those things, then we know it is right. Mm hmm Unless something else in the future crops yeah, up, up that and then, would and then make we it invalid uh, in that situation. That's right. Then you alter uh, it again a little. Then you, okay. then you know that it applies where it was. Mm -hmm. So that brings me to evolution. Now, All I'm right. not a biologist, so mm -hmm. I'm in the happy position of not having to answer questions. Mm -hmm. But biology is now the central organizing I'm sorry, evolution mm -hmm. is now the central organizing principle of all of modern biology. All right. In the same way that Newtonian mechanics is a central, is a central organizing principle in physics, it's not the only one. All right. Uh, uh, this is the only one in biology. Mm -hmm. And everything that we know about biology, all recent advances are based on an understanding of biology, which is due to evolution. Hmm. And in fact, it also has a fa an amazing predictive uh, track record. Uh, various uh, intermediary species, for instance, mm -hmm. the sort of, that used to be called missing links, right. have been discovered one after another, you know, okay. ju and doing ju just what they wanted. Okay. But now all of a sudden, all of a sudden comes along DNA. Mm -hmm. Before that, the biologists classified the animals and understood how they relate to each other mm -hmm. on the basis of evolutionary theory due to mm -hmm. their size and shape and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. DNA gave a completely new way of doing that and it came out spang on. Ah, so yes. it supported the earlier theories. Yeah, I mean, sure, there ability. was a mistake okay. here and there. Okay. Hmm. So evolution is actually the center of what we do. Mm -hmm. And this has to, and now we come back to this question of this attack on evolution. Uh, there are people who are trying to get us either not, well, they've given up giving, uh, getting us not to teach evolution in mm -hmm. school, but, but they're trying to insert other theories which are really based on religion. Uh, they're, they're called uh, intelligent design, mm -hmm and uh, creationism, mm -hmm. and to claim that they are scientific theories. Now, you know, they are not, they, it's not that they are wrong. Mm -hmm. Science has no objection to them. Science only objects to their being called science, uh -huh. because that is what they are not. Okay. And this is a very crucial issue for this country. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I know you want to talk. And that's why I'm here. That's right. what I'm doing. That's what I, why I'm doing all this, and that's why I'm looking for groups of people to talk to all the time. Right. And we hope you, know, you get 
some more um, gigs, as it were, but I know right. that also your main point is that science is valuable. And are people taking that for granted? Do they need a reminder of how important science is? You said our country's prosperity depends well, on uh, science, uh, but uh, it's more than prosperity. It's the ease yeah. of living and efficiency. And, yeah, right. You know, it's not just well, let, yeah, let, me, okay. let me speak to okay. that. We have, a, we have a couple the, minutes still. Yeah. You see, the 20th century was a golden age of physics. Mm -hmm. And America took the lead for various reasons, not because we're smarter than the others, but because the other developed countries were suffering from the second consequences of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. With the result that all the great things for a while were discovered here, the transistor, which is the basis of everything electronic in our lives, mm -hmm. for instance, and our country's prospered economically because we were way ahead of the others. Okay. Now, every ever not every, almost every physicist I know thinks that the 21st century will be a golden age of biology. Hmm. And the countries that really are ahead mm -hmm. are going to be the ones who come out better off, too. Okay. Now, we will never dominate the way we dominated in the 20th century. Right. But the question is, will we even be a serious player? Hmm. The, 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 uh, how, how should I put that? If we don't teach mm -hmm. the best science in our schools, okay. the best biology, which is evolution, mm -hmm. then we're not going to raise the kind of biologists who are going to pace the world, or even to keep up with the world, and that's going to be tragic for us. Okay. So that's the thing that I'm really afraid of. Okay, so, so to uh, recap very quickly, mm -hmm. your two main points are that science and religion do not have to be at odds, and secondly, that science is important, and that's one reason they should not be at odds, because science is very important. I'm very sure. much simplifying, but just yeah, to kind of that, that's, give people... That's, that's absolutely right. Okay. What that implies is that I don't particularly object to teaching these other notions okay. in school. Uh, the legal people object because of, because of church-state matters. Mm -hmm. I only object to their being called science. If they want to call them French mm -hmm. or physical training, it's okay with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is much that as they are science. Okay, well, that is wonderful, and I hope that we've covered everything, but because, I hope. because there will be information on ways people can contact you, I think Terrific. there's a lot more that can be said about this. You Obvious. are a wealth of information, and this has been absolutely fascinating. Um, yes, sure, but you know, it's more than that. Uh, right. Here I'm talking to your audience. Right. Uh, and in, a in, a, in another group, I talk with them. That's much better. And they can better. ask questions and have discussion, and right? Ha and so have their own ideas, which right. are sometimes right. <laughs> right. So I certainly hope that we can encourage more of that. Thank you very much for coming and sharing all of this. It's been a fascinating discussion, Dr. Peshkin. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for watching. Please join me again for future episodes of Today's Tidings.